What's up everyone, Sixpenny here, and today I'm gonna provide a full tutorial on how you can improve your chip shots in PGA Tour 2K23. You'll, if you're like me and you miss a lot of greens, you're gonna be chipping from the fairway a lot, you're gonna be chipping from the fringe, chipping from the heavy rough, and also chipping from the bunker. I made a video specifically on the bunkers in the channel, so I will not be covering bunkers in this video, but you can check out that one in the full gameplay tutorial playlist down in the description. I have covered almost every aspect of the game and I do have more tutorials coming as well for you all. So check that out after this video if you want more help in other aspects of the game. But for day, today's purposes, we're talking about the chip shot. If you all get some enjoyment and find some help out of this, drop a like, it really helps the channel and subscribe if you wanna see more and let's go. So the best place to practice is the practice facility. So if you go to the main menu, the casual tab, and open up the training menu, it's gonna take you to the driving range. In the driving range, hit the start button, go to practice, and then click on the chipping practice. That's where we are right now. Now it could take you to any of three greens in the facility. So if you hit the B button on the controller, it'll then, you can use left trigger and right trigger to navigate. I know I show this a lot in my other videos. And you can move, you can use the left stick to move around wherever you want. And the A button on the Xbox controller or X button to place your ball wherever you want. You can also, if I wanted to move to other greens, I can tap L, I can double tap LB and RB to change my target. You see this yellow circle? That's showing my target, my green target. I can navigate between. Now, I actually think the best, this is a great place to practice approach shots, pitch shots, splash shots down here. But this top portion up here is a great way to practice chip shots. Because I find myself in the, rough, the heavy rough a lot. There's so many more heavy rough chips from here. And I really like this practice place. This is actually where I spend a lot of my chipping practice. So when you're here, what I recommend doing if you want to practice the same shot over and over, by default, if you hit start button, it's going to have auto mulligan off. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on because I want to hit the same shot over and over and demonstrate things for you all in this video. So we have auto mulligan on. And for this video's purposes, I have the power meter on. I don't usually play at the power meter. If you watch any of my other gameplay videos and see how I play, I play at the power meter off. But for demonstration purposes, I know a lot of people play with it on in my community. And I want to show you all the, the process. So the biggest change in chip shots in 2K21 is the distance that the chip shot flies. In 2K21, the lob wedge chip carried seven yards. In 2K23, the lob wedge chip carries 25 yards, and that changes depending on what archetype you're using. I'm using the rhythm archetype. It's my favorite archetype in the game. My lob wedge carries 25 yards. So that means in this game, you're going to have to hit a lot of partial chips. Last game, chipping was just so easy. This game, you actually have to work on getting your distance right, and I'm going to show you strategies to do that. Now, with that, they balanced... The it's tough to hit distance this year, but they balance that by making chip shots very forgiving. So tempo is not really as important on chip shots. And you can get ultra aggressive with shot shaping. And I'm going to show you how aggressive I get with shot shaping and show you that exact process. So let's take a look at this specific chip shot. We have a 12 yard chip shot, not much to it. There's no elevation changes, but if, if there was approach it the same way as my elevation tutorial video. If you want to know how to play different elevations, you can check out that video on the channel. But don't forget to apply everything you've learned on the channel on all of your golf shots. So we get to the chip shot. We have a 12 yard carry. The first thing I do, the game gives you a default carry distance for the chip and it's actually pretty good. But I do chip shots very differently than what the game's doing. The game is setting a default distance based on no shot shaping, right? The first thing I do, I hit the Y button, I zoom in, and I'm gonna move my aim marker to the hole. So I move my aim marker to 12 yards. My first step on every single chip is to move three grid lines back. I'm gonna go slow in this video, show you all my process. I, uh, keep in mind when you watch my videos, I do this really quickly, right? A lot of it I do in my head on the fly. So move three grid lines back. That's my general rule. That's about nine feet. Around nine feet, that's where I start. It's very similar, right? If we go back to the game starting distance, it's here. My starting is like right here. So it's very similar to what the game gives me. But that's a starting point. 
The next step, I'm looking at the slope of the green. How is the green sloped? If this green, if we take a look at this, you see how these grids are moving towards where I'm standing? Towards the screen? These grids, that means it's slightly uphill. So inherently, I'm going to go ahead and add like a grid line and a half of distance. Because I know up the hill, I'm going to get less row. Another thing you have to keep in mind is green speeds. But with the way I chip, green speeds, even with, fair, if with fast green speeds, unless you're on significant downhill, if you put full loft in shot shaping, full loft in spin in shot shaping, you can really limit the row. Now, in extreme fast green, so I talk about green speeds in my putting video if you want to learn about the different green speeds. But at the top right of the screen, when you have your putter out, it's going to tell you the distance the putter would travel with the full swing on a flat surface on that green. The higher that number is, the quicker the greens are. So if you're in a round and you see a higher number, so in practice, I think it's a 117, 116 in the practice facility, slower greens. But if you're in a round and it says 156, 178 at the top right when you have the putter out on the green, that means that you better be adjusting on chip shots as well so if this was fast greens what i would do i have my initial spot three on fast green speeds i would just compensate and take off a few grid lines especially if it's downhill downhill i'd be even more cautious and go back even farther so don't forget to adjust so we let's go back to our position we're at three around three grid lines short and i did my eye test and because it's uphill i want to aim about at this grid line right here so we're about a grid and a half short next up you got to aim right treat treat this just like a putt picture the ball flying through the air where is it going to land mine's going to land anywhere between 11 and 10 yards right depending on how my if i hit my perfect power mark so i look at the green the only grid line i need to worry about are these three grid lines right here we're going to fly over these these don't matter so basically it's just breaking a little bit left to right by the hole so if I hit perfect tempo, I need to aim like left edge. So I adjusted for the aim. I have my distance down. I have my aim down. The next step is to take a look at the feet lie, the lie angle at your feet. So to, my favorite way to do this, I click the right stick in. I'm a left stick swinger. So if you swing with the right stick, I believe you have to click the left stick in. I could be wrong. On me, For me, left stick is practice swing. Right stick is change view. And I switch to this low view. And what I'm looking at, if you have lie grids turned on, you can hit the LB button and you pull up the grids. If you don't have the grid lines turned on, what you take a look at is your golfer's feet, feet position relative to the ball. A side, you're looking for a side hill lie. Some people are still refer to this as a downhill lie. In rel it, like You're standing on a downhill lie if the, darf, the golfer is tilted downhill. An uphill lie if your golfer is tilted uphill. I like to think of these as left and right side hill lies because their their effect is aim left and right i like to think as uphill and downhill lies as the second aspect that affects your distance some people call those up, hitting into an upslope or hitting into a downslope that's the terminology i use you can call it whatever you want but in this example the feet are flat right there's no feet like maybe slightly above the ball but if the feet are above the ball if it's a left to right side hill lie the ball is going to push to the right. Not very much on chip shots, more on other shots. So you need to aim to compensate. You need to aim a little bit to the left to compensate for that. Not a lot, just a, bare, a little bit on chips. Like you don't have to adjust very much. Sometimes you don't have to adjust at all. Like if it's a green slope, like if it's orange or red, you need to adjust. But like green slopes are not a big deal. You don't even really need to adjust for them very much. Much. Now if it's the other way, if it's a right to left side hill lie, this is as a righty, right? It's the, it's the opposite as a lefty. That means my ball is going to pull. So it's my feet are below the ball, feet below the ball. I need to aim to the right to compensate. It's gonna come off to the left. So I will be doing a video on lie angles probably in the future like I did for 2K21, but I have to I have to talk about it in all my videos. So you all have heard a lot about lie angles so far already across my full tutorial series. So next up, you have to look at the upslope, right? The upslope, I call this an uphill lie, which means if these grid lines were moving back towards me very aggressively, distance would be taken off my shot. 
So if I'm hitting into an upslope, I would have to take, I would have to add distance because my club, my chip shot is going to carry less. And then if it's a downhill lie, if these grid lines are moving this way like crazy, uh, now keep in mind you gotta, it's gotta be a lot of movement, right, for it to really affect a chip shot. It's gonna affect other shots more, but I would need to take off distance on this chip shot in order to compensate. So I like to go over everything. That way, I know I, I have a lot of questions on lie angles and such, so I like to cover everything in these, in all the guides, especially this chipping guide, because this is how I approach the chip shot. Yeah, I do this quick when I usually play. Uh, so we had, let's go back to our original spot, left edge, 11 yards. Next up is the most important thing for me. I hold down the shot shaping button, LB or L1, not sure what it is on mouse and keyboard, I move the left stick all the way down to add full loft, right stick all the way down to add full backspin. That is how I approach my chip shots. I get very aggressive. Next up is the eye test, like always in all my videos. Don't rely only on the numbers in the system. Do the eye test. Keep in, like, is it going to carry that much? I think I might, it passes the eye test, but then you also have to compensate for, have you been crushing your chip shots every single time? If you overpower every single chip shot, compensate with that with your aim. Aim a little bit less. If you underswing, add a little bit more. Like, don't forget to compensate based on the way you've been playing it around. That is very important in this game. Next up, we have full shot shaping. We have our shot, shot set up. All that's left is to hit the chip shot, right? So click the left stick in, go into practice swing. Practice swing is your friend because partial shots are very difficult in this game. On chip shots, what I do, I usually play at the power meter off. So I'm looking at the club. Usually in every other shot in the game, I'm looking at the golfer's hand position relative to the golfer, right? Re relative to the golfer's body. And that's where I look at. But on chip shots and putts, I look at the club face. So I'm looking at when my controller vibrates, if you have vibration turned on, I'm looking and filling for that vibration. And I'm looking at the club. That's all I'm looking at. I'm looking at the club and seeing the position it is. And I lock on to that position. I lock on to that position fully. And as soon as the club gets there, I swing forward. That's how I get my power. Chips are very forgiving on tempo, but it is so easy to fast chips. So you have to really focus on decreasing your downswing tempo. You have to really slow down. I talked about this in my bunker shots tutorial. You don't have to pull the stick all the way back for partial shots. You just barely pull it back. It's so much easier. Barely pull it back and then barely flick it forward. Like, you don't have to do very much. And you can see I'm very fasting a lot. I very fast most of my chips. I slowed that. The great thing about chip shots, it's not really a huge deal, right? You, you're going to very fast, very slow. You're going to take off some distance to the shot. But you're still going to have a pretty good chip shot. So practice swing, practice swing, practice swing. It is so important on partial shots in this game. Tempo is not as important on chip shots, but hitting that perfect distance spot is. So that's what you want to focus on. Now I have to talk about mouse and keyboard because if you're playing on mouse and keyboard, you don't have vibration turned on. You want to practice swing all the time and pay attention to the right side of the screen. Pay attention to the power feedback. So if you're sh if you're if it's dark gray at the bottom right, you know you're either under or over power right if it's dark gray if it's light gray it shows that you're in the right spot like you're getting there so you want to look for either light gray or white white is what you want to look for that's that perfect power spot so you're just gonna have to practice swing and practice swing like crazy on mouse and keyboard until you get a feeling for it practice swing is your best friend when you're learning this game trust me don't forget about it you know if you're in a matchmaking match maybe don't do it too much so your opponent doesn't get too frustrated when you're practicing in society rounds and stuff like that do it before every shot. It helps big time. So we have our shot fully set up, right? I have a good feeling about what I want to hit. And let's go ahead and hit the golf shot, right? We have our shot shaping on. We have our aim. Let's hit the shot. And we happen to make it, which is nice, right? Which is awesome. But what did you notice? We made it. My swing, my swing plane was not the best. I fasted it as well. I pushed it and fasted it. Made the shot. You don't have to be perfect on chip shots. You have to be perfect on distance or around that. You don't have to be perfect, but pretty close. 
But watch this. I'm going to very fast it now. Same chip. Still a very makeable putt. Like, you see how forgiving that is? Let's, I'm going to try. I usually can't slow chips, but I'm going to try. I, yeah, I can't. It's so hard for me to slow chips. But look how bad that swing plane was. Slight fast. It is so forgiving. That is the reason you can use full shot shaping and get aggressive. My first shot was the best because I hit I hit what I wanted to, right? But even you see, even when I missed tempo, and like I slightly over I overpowered that and hit very fast and pushed it, I still hit a great chip shot. This is a simple chip shot though, but what I wanted to show you was the process that I use. Now, let's go to a heavy rough position downhill. Is just like my lie percentage video. You, let's chip from the heavy stuff here. We're going to do a downhill shot, short-sided chip. Let, let's see if we can find a little bit more down the slope or on that downhill line here, right here. So this is a great example. You will find yourself in these positions all the time. First thing that I do is the same approach. I take a look at, we're at the hole. We're at nine yards. Uh, it's slightly downhill one foot. That's not going to really make a big difference. So I'm not even going to compensate for it, right? But what we do have to compensate for is the top right of the screen. You see where it says 83, 70 to 83% lie? Just like my lie percentage video and lie ranges video, we have to compensate for that in our calculations. And thanks to Mike Carpenter out there has made the math so much easier for me. So thank you for that, Mike. If you're out there watching this video, you legend. So... It's much, a much easier calculation. You know, I was getting to the same numbers, but you can calculate it from the landing spot even easier than I did it. So we're going to go back to normal, three grid lines like I always do right here. And then it's a downhill shot, right? It's a downhill shot on slow greens. So I inherently know I'm going to play this safe and I'm going to take off about a half more grid. If this was on very fast greens, I would be taken off much more than that. Another thing we have to keep in mind is we're from the heavy rough. From the heavy rough, you cannot get your groove of the clubs on it. Just like real life, it's hard to generate as much spin. So you're going to inherently have more forward row, even with full shot shaping. So I'm going to compensate by that and take a little bit more off the shot. Because we'll be doing the eye test later and seeing if we're right. But then... So my landing spot, if I wanted, I, I already do the eye test here. I'm like, I don't like the way this looks. I think it's going to come up too short. I'm going to actually go ahead and add about a grid line to compensate here. About right here is going to be my aim spot. That's the eye test. It's so important. Don't forget to do it. You know, use the math, use the system, but go by Phil. What does it feel? What have you, have you had similar shots? I've had similar shots like this every single round. Compensate. So then we have to take a look at the lie range at the top right of the screen. I choose the number in the middle for my calculations. So the cool part about this is Mike Carpenter made it so much easier. All we have to do is take a look at our landing spot of five yards. And I'm going to take five yards. So five yards divided by a number in the middle in percent. So five divided by point. Let's choose 0.78 and 6. 6.4. So I need to carry this about 6.6 6 and a half yards. So I'm going to move my A marker to there. 6 and a half. I'm going to add a little bit more because it's a decibel. Now keep in mind, the lie percentage is random. It could, be any, it could affect the ball anywhere from 71% to 83%. So... Keep that in mind when you're doing this calculation. Now, if you don't want to do the way I just did it, if you don't want to pick your landing spot and then do the math, you could do the math straight at the pin. I could take 9 yards. I could take 9 divided by 0.5. I mean, 0.78, excuse me. And that would give me 11. So this this from this spot, the pin is actually going to play like an 11-yard shot. Or you can do it from the club distance, like I showed you in the video. I could take 25 times 0.78, and it gives you 19. And so that's how far it's going to carry at stock. I think the easiest way is choose your lice, choose your where you want to land the ball, and then do the math from there. 
So we've compensated for the distance, but now we got to look at the aim. How is the green sloped? Where this ball is going to land is probably somewhere in this region. Remember, we got to remember our, region, our, our math we did. So it's going to land here. It's going to slope quite a bit from right to left. So I'm going to aim to the right to compensate. About half a grid is my initial read. What's the other thing we have to keep in mind? Do you remember I talked about the lie angle? This is a great example. See how the feet are well below the ball? That's a right to left side hill lie. The ball is going to pull off the club face no matter what. So if, I, if I pull up the grids here, this is a red slope, right? If you have lie grids on, you can hold down LB and you can see that. So I need to compensate. This is a red lie. So I need to aim a bit more to the right, not a lot, to compensate. And then, shot shaping. We're in the rough. I, I do every chip shot basically the same. Full loft, full backspin. Now, if we're on a significant upslope, if, if we're uphill, like we're, if we take a look at this, you see how these grid lines are moving down? So that's a downhill lie, or some people call that hitting off a downslope. That means it's going to add some carry distance to the shot. But it's a green. You don't really have to compensate for it here very much. And we already have, we know we're in the rough. We can't be exact on distance anyways because it's a 70 to 83% lie. It could be, it could affect it. It could fly 83% of the distance and we're going to blast it over. It could fly 70 and we're going to be sure, short. I would rather be short here. So I'm going to use my fill and I'm going to take off a little bit of distance because I would rather miss short than far on most downhill chip shots. So I know it's a lot to think about, but in these tutorial videos, I like to show you my full thought process and really slow it down for you all. That's the way I like to do it. I know when I actually do my rounds, I play quick, but I like to slow down and, and show you my full thought process. And, and so here we go. I've compensated for everything, full loft backspin. Next up, practice swing. I'm looking at the club. I pushed it big time, but remember, I'm not focusing too much on tempo here. I am focusing on swing playing, but I'm focusing on distance. How high is my club? Look at this partial, 57%. But, it, but the club distances on the meter are not actual percents. If you hit 57% of 25, if you take 57% of 25, it's not six. So keep in mind that it's not compensating for lie angle. It's not compensating for anything. It's just the way the power meter is. These are not true percents. <laughs> the power meter percents or the percents in this game are not true percents. It's its own percents that they use. I don't know what they use for these percents, but it's not a true percent. <laughs> so I had the fill for the club. I'm watching the club. Then I lock on in that spot. That's all I'm looking at. I'm looking at that spot and we're going to hit the shot. Great chip. I fasted it. See how forgiving it is? We played it, we, that, the rough affected it a little more, so we got the 70%, and perfect shot, right? That was a beautiful chip shot. It was a lot to think about and a lot to go through, but that's the system. That is how I do it, whether I'm from the rough, whether I'm from the fringe, you know, wherever I'm at, I'm doing full shot shaping with the lob wedge. Very rarely are you gonna chip with the sand gap because there's only a yard difference between them, and you're going to get so much more rollout with the other clubs. So I chip 99% of the time with the lob, lob wedge. So you can practice this. Practice makes perfect, everybody. I'm telling you all, what, no matter where you're chipping from, practice makes perfect in this game. Use the system. Use fill. Don't forget to change each round based on the green speed. If this, for example, let's go back to this example. If this was a 178 green speed or like really fast, like very fast greens fast, bullsh if, unless I was using one of the special legendary friction balls or magnet balls, I would be aiming for like a landing spot of here, <laughs> especially if it's all the way downhill. Don't forget to compensate during a round. If you play the first hole and you have a downhill chip shot and it's just gone, your next hole when you have the same shot compensate for it it is so important to adapt in this game during your rounds and from round to round use the system learn the system learn the concepts but then use your brain use your fill use your gut 
If your gut's telling you something feels off af after you've set up everything, change it by the eye test. Change it. And yeah, you may be wrong. Your eyes may be wrong. Your gut may be wrong. It probably will be wrong a lot early in this game. But use the system. That is what I'm to use a system. Use your system. You don't have to go through all this. A lot of this was just to show you all my process and what I do. You don't have to do any of it, right? But hope this was helpful to you all. Uh, showing you the way I approach different chip shots from this game in different lies. Now, if you want to learn about bunker shots, I have a full tutorial video on that. And I will be doing a video on putting from the fringe as well. Because you can putt from the fringe. You have to change you have to do some calculations and change some things but yeah putting from the fringe is possible and that video may be live by the time you're watching this depending on when you're watching this but drop a like if you got some enjoyment subscribe for more check out the full playlist down in the description if you're looking for other tutorials but also if you want to see my process in action watch my career mode series videos watch my course showcase videos and all my other gameplay videos and also live streams over on twitch twitch link and schedule down in the description but I appreciate each and every one of you all. You all are legends. I will see you in the next one. As always, have a fantastic day, everybody.